Morning everyone. It is Wednesday the 22nd of July and this morning we're going to read together Psalm 28. Let's read it. I pray to you, O Lord, my rock, do not turn a deaf ear to me. If you are silent, I might as well give up and die. Listen to my prayer for mercy as I cry out to you for help, as I lift my hands towards your holy sanctuary. Do not drive me away with the wicked, with those who do evil, those who speak friendly words to their neighbours while planning evil in their hearts. Give them the punishment they so richly deserve, measure it out in proportion to their wickedness. Pay them back with all their evil, for all their evil deeds. Give them a taste of what they have done to others. They care nothing for what the Lord has done or for what his hands have made. So he will tear them down and they will never be rebuilt. Praise the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. The Lord gives his people strength. He is a safe fortress for his anointed king. Save your people. Bless Israel, your special possession. Lead them like a shepherd and carry them in your arms forever. Amen. I said before, the Psalms are a snapshot in time. The Psalmist writes them in different circumstances and you can see the highs and lows of life. We have no idea of the timeline of them, really. We don't know, we can guess, maybe an educated guess, but maybe when some of them were written, others we have no idea. Um, we don't even know if they go in chronological order the way they are in the Bible. Um, but we know that they're God's word and we know that they have something to say to us. In Psalm 28, as you read through part of it, as you get to verse 3, you can maybe stagger a guess at what is going on for the psalmist at that time. He talked about, do not drag me away with the wicked, with those who do evil, those who speak friendly words to their neighbours while planning evil in their hearts. Maybe somebody has pretended to be a friend to the psalmist, but actually they've turned out to have their own agenda. They're not really a friend, they're after something for themselves. And the psalmist is annoyed about that, he's cross about it. But at the same time, he is measured. He says to God, give them the, the, the the punishment they so richly deserve. Measure it out in proportion to their wickedness. He's not asking God to come down on top of them and crush them, but he's asking that whatever punishment is put to them, that it's in proportion to what they have done wrong. He's asking for justice. Now, justice means different things to different people. Um, justice runs right the way through the Bible. I mean, Part of the Bible, which is quoted time and time again, is an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Um, that's about justice. That's about how punishment should fit crime and, and such like. Uh, and that's something which maybe in the Bible at times we struggle with as we try to reconcile justice with a loving God. But God teaches us right the way through his word that sin has repercussions, that sin carries a cost and that cost has to be answered for. And ultimately that the answer for that, that sin is that we are out of a relationship with God. But the wonderful thing is because of Jesus, that relationship is restored, that relationship is fixed. The psalmist alludes to it here. Praise the Lord for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength, my shield. I trust in him with all my heart. The psalmist knows that even though people are doing wrong to him and he's asking God for justice, the psalmist also knows that he in his own right is not, is not right with God. He in his, own, in his own actions. And he needs God to put that right. And he, can, he knows he can do that because he trusts in God. If we examine our own lives every day, there's things about it that we like, things about it that we don't like, things that we do which we know we should do. Things that we don't do that we should do, as well as things that we do that we know we shouldn't do. And maybe we wrestle with that. Maybe we find that difficult. Maybe it tears you apart at times. Maybe you find yourself, you know, shouting at yourself or angry with yourself because of that. Give it over to God. Give it to him. God is the one who can take care of it. God is the one who can give you the strength each day to live your life the way he wants you to. You'll not always get it right, but we don't. But just trust him. 
That's what the psalmist does. And, and this particular psalm is accredited to David at the very start. And David, we know, does things which are good and things which are not so good. And yet, through it all, David, at other places, is called a man after God's own heart. You know, he comes back, he seeks forgiveness, he, 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 he looks for the right way to be living. And that's what we need to do day in and day out. Look for that, that true relationship with God. Not be a false friend, the way some people have been the psalmist, who are saying one thing and doing another, but being a true friend. Because God is our true friend. We can trust everything that he says. We can, we can rely upon everything that he says and teaches us. We know it's true. That's who God is. He's the one who always will speak truth. And even whenever we find that hard, he still speaks truth to us, knowing that even though we find it hard, it's what we need. May God show all of us this day the truth that we need. May he guide us and direct us. And may we truly be able to say that God is our friend, the one who we rely upon. Let's pray together. Father, thank you that we can have that personal relationship with you. Thank you that because of Jesus, um, we can have our sins forgiven and be close to you. Lord, we know we have friends here on earth and, and friends who are good, friends who are not so good, friends who are after their own agenda. Lord, thank you that you're not like that, <clears throat> but that we can trust you to be true and honest in all circumstances and all events with us. Father, you are the one true God and we thank you for that. Help us this day to live for you. Lord, help us to do the things that we should do and, and not to do the things that we shouldn't. Help us to seek your will and to do and to walk in that path which you've led out before us. So Lord, thank you. And continue with us now, we pray this day in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks folks for listening. Um, see you again tomorrow. Take care. God bless.